Hi, I'm Jody Hand, Mrs. Hand Painted, and today's video I'm going to walk you through the steps I did to paint this really pretty lighthouse scene. I'm really happy with how this painting turned out. I haven't normally painted on this big of a paper before. It's size 11 by 14, and I used Fluid 100, 100% cotton paper from Speedball Arts. I've had this paper on my shelf for a while, and I haven't found anything I wanted to paint this big on. Uh, I'll show you how I work through this every step so that you can paint one too and I'll even share my sketch with you on my blog so you can find that link in my description of the sketch that I drew this morning to paint this. So I hope you have fun painting along with me. Alright, so today's video I am painting, going to paint this lighthouse that I sketched this morning. Um, did that in my sketchbook and then I used my LED light pad and I transferred over just the basic part of the sketch onto, this is some Fluid 100 cold press finish. It's 100% cotton paper, size 11 by 14. Um, I painted in some smaller ones of this before, but I've actually never done a painting quite this big before. I, the biggest I usually do is 9 by 12. So. This, uh, I actually had to tape it down to a piece of board. Me losing my lights here. Okay, so I taped this down to a board since I don't have it on a block. And I'm doing a landscape here so, so my paper won't buckle. I taped it down on all the edges. All right, I am going to start on the sky, and I think I'm going to do my horizon line here, where I just kind of loosely did a sketch of where I want the sky to end. So I'm going to go with some clean water. I have a half inch Princeton Velvet Touch wash brush, and uh, I think I might need to buy a bigger one for bigger paintings like this. This is the biggest flat brush I have right now, so. I'm going to go ahead and wet my sky area. Oh, and I should note that I did uh, use a uh, water soluble graphite pencil for transferring over my sketch with my light pad. Uh, this way uh, the pencil lines will kind of just blur into the paint. You could use watercolor pencil would actually be pretty good too if you had the colors you wanted to use for that. All right, I'm just trying to get an even sheen and no puddles. All right, and I've got my Daniel Smith watercolors here. Let me just turn that a little bit here. Sorry, I'm trying, it's a big painting, so I'm trying to keep it all in the camera. All right, um, I think I'm gonna use uh, just some phthalo blue. I have a phthalo blue green shade here. And then I want that to be a little bit more gray, so I'm going to add some neutral tint to that. See what that looks like. Maybe a little bit more. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. All right. And um, this is just a, what I'm using to mix on. What I always do is just um, is a plate I bought at World Market. So try and put that color in there. And this is why we tape it down. You can already see that it's buckled with all that water on it. And I'm just adding more water to my brush as I try to spread that color around so I don't get any kind of harsh lines. I'm noticing this paper dries very fairly quickly. I'm trying to work fast here. I'm going to try to smooth out any of these really puddled areas that I have here so I don't end up with blooms all over it. 
Okay, I'm going to take my paper towel. I'm going to put some clouds in and just kind of sop up any really bad puddly spots too. looks pretty. Um, after that dries, I might go back and add like some little seagulls or something. I'm not sure yet. Okay. I don't want this to bleed into my ocean, so I think I'll work on my beachy area maybe. Um, I'll use my same flat wash brush. I'm just going to add some water. And here, this would be like my beach edge. It's coming up from behind there. And I'm going to have like some rocks around this. It's going to be like a little rocky area as well. So, all right, I am going to pick up some yellow ochre. Water is already drying on that side. All I am going to take, I have a large round brush, I have a size 10, I'm going to go in, I'm just going to add in some of these little areas where I'm going to have some rocks. I'm going to make some gray, um, I'll use some ultramarine here. And I'll use my, I have burnt sienna light. to be. And this is just some of the background, so I'll go back over this with more details later. Just kind of plotting in where I'm going to have my rocky areas. And I'm just doing that right into the wet. We'll add in more details later. Okay, yeah, that's pretty dry up there. Now I'm going to go ahead and start working on my ocean. So I'm going to go back to my wash brush and I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to use a little bit of a darker blue. I've, I'll use my phthalo blue and I'll mix that in. 
maybe with some indigo and some Prussian blue, we'll see here. But I'm just gonna go ahead and wet that kind of loosely here. Right, so I am just taking the side of my flat brush and I'm just going off my edge here too. Uh, and I'm just going horizontally, you like waves. Um, I want some little darker spots, so I'm gonna take a little indigo. Just a little bit dark in here. I'm leaving some white areas because that would be like reflections of the edge of the waves or the foamy areas. Mm. Okay, let's see. Um, get some Prussian blue in there. Let's get some of this phalo blue. Add a little bit of neutral tint back into that. That is very bright. All right, I'm going to switch back to my round here, and I'm going to use that to just kind of blend some of these areas in just to get some lighter colors in there. much blue on my edge of my lighthouse there. Whip that up.
I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this yet, but maybe once I finish it, I'll like it a little better. But one thing I struggle with is water. It's tough. But we will see how this turns out. All right, I'm going to go back to my rocks, I think. I'm going to go and get a, get a six, a round six here. Mix up some more gray again. I think I've lost some of that. Some more ultramine, ultramarine and the burnt sienna. Maybe a little more on the brown side this time. That's all right. All right, well, that's drying. I'm gonna go ahead and start working on my lighthouse. I think I'll do um, these glass areas here. Oh, I'm realizing I should have extended my um, ocean. I'll just add in a little more color here. Okay, work on this glass here a little bit. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of this phyllo turquoise, but just dilute that down. It's very pale. All right, and I have like um, a railing here in front of it, so I'll just kind of. I'm not going to paint most of it. It's going to stay like kind of clear, so I'm just going to kind of just where the panes are, and then some kind of reflection areas on it. Constantly getting fuzz on my brush. blue here where the ocean would be showing through the window there okay so I am gonna do kind of a gray color on my uh, lighthouse so I had that gray I was mixing up for the rocks but now it's a little more brown side I want it to be more of like a gray blue and 
I'm gonna actually add in a little bit of that turquoise. Maybe that would be a nice, yeah, it's kind of a gray green now. That's pretty. Okay. I'm almost doing like a dry brush technique here. I just want to have some kind of um, like wisps of color here where I'm not completely saturating the paper there. So I'm just painting until I have like no paint left on my brush. Give this kind of like a whitewashed almost look. I'll go back over with another layer maybe. Let's see. I do want to um, kind of define these lines though, that I drew in for the, the shape of the lighthouse just because I want that to show dimension and the fact that this is not a round. I want it to look more angular so I'm just going to just do another layer over that area and then do a little darker around that edge. that that looks more defined there. And I'll do that on the outside edge as well. On my roof, I'm going to make red. I'm going to do um, kind of like this deep scarlet. That's going to be a bit weathered looking, so I'm not going to completely fill that in. We have a few little highlighted areas. And I'll go back over that a little bit of a darker tint later. Switch to just a slightly smaller brush. I have a four here so I can do these antennas. I'm going to take some indigo. And 
antenna coming up there, and then I'll know this railing. I'll also do that in the indigo. And then, um, let's see, I'm going to dilute down my indigo just a little bit. And then I'm just going to do the faintest little lines just to kind of show where the glass panels are. So these windows are going to be darkened in too, so I will make those indigo as well. Maybe a little more gray. Do the same with the door. take a little of this indigo. I'm just going to go back over my lines. I'm just not happy with just that gray there. Okay, um, let's see, I'm going to do, I think, a little bit more work on these rocks, and then I'll add some grass in. Um, let's see, actually, I'm going to take this kind of gray color I had up here, I'm just going to do a little bit of, um, just definition up here on the top. Kind of give that a little weathered of an appearance. There, I think that's just a little more detail to that. Very pale, but um, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna take some of this indigo with a little bit of my grayish color, a little bit of greeny color in there, and I'm just gonna add in more colors to my rocks. I'm 
And I'm using that four, so that round four. Just kind of adding in some blob shapes that are rocks. Just like a little bit just dabbing in some of this indigo here just to give some darker areas in my rocky area. And just add some coming in here. More of that burnt sienna color in here just to More small rocks over here. And we're just coming into the water's edge here. All right, I kind of lost some of my texture up here, so I'm just gonna put it a little bit back in. Fill in some of those little white areas that I wanted. Okay. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the way the water is looking. I want to add in some seagulls and some grasses. Um, so I don't have any of that. I still have some wet rocks right here. I'm going to dry this really quick so that I can add grasses on top. I'm actually noticing here I don't like how bright that is. I'm going to take a little bit of my indigo and my brown up here, just kind of darken that up a little bit and give it a little more interest. Okay, um, with my round four while I have that out and I still have a little bit of this indigo going on over here. Just gonna add some very in the distance little birds. Not too many, just a few. I think I'll do a couple over here too. that they're not perfectly v-shaped when a bird is flying this would be the wings coming up and this would be the body so you're seeing it from the side so i have the body with a wing coming up that's something if you want to just practice on the side before you dedicate to doing all of your birds okay now for my last little part my details i want to do some grass i'm going to use this one quarter inch dagger striper from princeton velvet touch and i'm going to use some undersea green I might mix some of that with that yellow ochre to give me a couple different shades too and I have some blue I can mix with it. All right, so I'm gonna have just some different grassy areas coming out of these rocks and I'm holding this brush, not straight up and down, but at an angle and I'm gonna sweep up like this and you'll start with more pressure at the bottom and then lighten your pressure as you go up to make the grass go thinner. 
So that's something you want to practice on a separate sheet of paper first before you commit to that, just so you get the feel of it, because it does take some time to get used to a dagger striper brush. It's a different type than a round. Of course, if you don't have one of these, you could use a rigger, liner, some other thin, small brush that you can make some thin grasses with. And ones on the front will be thicker and um, maybe a little taller than the ones you're showing in the back because they're further away. And since it is pretty small, it doesn't hold a super ton of water, so you do have to keep reloading your brush so that it doesn't dry out on you. I'm just trying to vary the length and the direction of my grass tufts. So I have them kind of coming out from behind the rock outcroppings and I'm not going in front of them, I'm just trying to start at that edge there. take a little bit of that green and just kind of go into that yellow or give me a nice kind of olivey green brown color actually and add in some more brown colored grasses in here too back here this is much further away so I don't want to go too tall I just want to make those nice and small I can get a little taller as I go forward as I'm coming from behind my I just do a bunch here that are kind of around the base of where this is. This is going to be just a really kind of overgrown area. It's off season, nobody's been keeping it up. Maybe it's abandoned. Take a look at it every few minutes, stop, see if you think there is a few areas. You could add a few more grasses. Um, yeah. I really 
really like how this is turning out. I, I don't think I want to go any more on here because I don't want to overdo it. Knowing when to stop. All right, I hope you really like this painting and if you painted along with me, I'd love to see it. I'm gonna wait for this to completely dry and then I can remove the tape. How about I just go ahead and do that? I'm gonna dry it and then we can watch as the tape comes off. Yeah, when you do tape a paper down like this, you want to make sure it's completely dry. Um, if you have it on a block or if you tape it down, make sure it's completely dry before you remove your tape so that it doesn't curl up on you. Oh, I'm shorting out on me. paper was the exact size of my board so I taped around the back side of it definitely sticking down very well for me here was it tip I have for removing tape is to not pull straight up but at an angle like this so that you don't pull up bits of your paper by accident. You can tell, I don't know if you can tell here where I started. I was kind of pulling straight up so it was pulling off a small layer of my paper. I'm not sure if you can see that but pulling at an angle like this will help that um, prevent that from happening. Wow, I'm getting a very nice, satisfying, straight, crisp edge on that. Oh, darn it. Pulled a little too hard and I got a little bit of paper fraying there again. I right, got that off my board. That turned out just really great, better than I was expecting. Sometimes when I sketch something, I like my sketch better than how it ends up looking in the painting, but this turned out really pretty and I'm really happy with how it turned out.